It has been more than a year since I spoke about dots based navigation system on this channel. I also promised to refactor it as it had some hard coded stuff. Hey everyone, Forging Station here and today we are going to revisit the dots based navigation system which is now faster, modular, cleaner and also easier to maintain in case you want to fine tune the behavior to your liking. Before jumping in though, let me go over the old code and point out some of the problems in the pattern. Do note that the old code is still functional and the code works as expected and has been verified by many of you. Today we are only going to refactor it. We have hard coded values to start with that needs to be moved out. This was only done to limit the number of entities routed per frame. Most of the code running on the main thread that we see here is to cache the calculated path. The more I use it, the more I realize caching may not always be necessary as start and end points are not always the same. Even if they were, a different path may be needed to add some variation to the gameplay. We are also ripping apart the unit component and then scheduling a path calculation job while we could have passed the entire unit component to the job. The code also does not respect separation of concern. What I mean here is, we must be able to add navigation capability to any entity that needs navigation without modifying the navigation system every time. So now that we know the issues in the last version of the code, let's go over the current version of the code. We will need the path utils class provided by Unity, so no changes there. The first thing we have here is the nav agent global setting, a singleton class which holds some of the global variables that globally apply to all agents in your game. The extent variable here is specifying how far the system can search to find the navigation mesh from the start and end point that we specify. There are many other things that you might want to know. If this doesn't make sense, I'll link the previous video here where I go over all such variables in detail. Coming back, we have the nav agent component that has the from and to location needed for path calculation and a routed flag that signifies the agent has been routed. The nav agent buffer is a dynamic buffer where the calculated waypoints are dumped onto. We have a simple entity spawner called unit spawner which adds the agent component and the buffer to the entity being spawned, thereby providing navigation functionality. We definitely do not want all the entities to be routed in a single frame. This especially becomes evident when dealing with large number of entities that have to be processed. This results in sudden drop in frame rate or stuttering at worst, both of which are not desirable to us as gamers. When we absolutely hate frame drops hampering frame pacing and leading to loss of immersion, we must make every effort to at least not cause it. One way to avoid this, not only in this example but while working with ECS, is to ease out processing of entities over several frames by processing set number of entities per frame. Now some of you advanced users might be thinking of iJob Entity Batch which might automatically take care of this. Though it did not seem to work for me, I have a working version that I'll be committing to git for you guys to have a look. I also wanted to have more control over the entities processed per frame and delegate that control to the user or caller using this navigation system that is via nav agent global settings class. So to accomplish this, we have two systems. One is the pre-processing system which queries all the entities that do not have the to be routed flag, checks if these entities are routed, if not adds the to be routed flag, all while making use of command buffer. We also set this stack to limited number of entities per frame. If you want any other pre-processing to be done, it can be handled here. The other system is the actual nav agent system that looks for entities having to be routed flag queries the navigation mesh and executes a parallel job to calculate path for all the agents. The calculated path is populated to nav agent buffer attached to every agent in the form of waypoints. This also removes the to be routed tag and sets the routed flag to true. This also ensures that the caller is not forced to use command buffer or entity manager to add or remove routing tags. Note that the system is executed on limited number of entities marked for routing by other system. Also, both the systems are using begin simulation entity command buffer to make structural changes. Hence, both the systems are never executed in the same frame for a given entity. This is because in any given frame, an entity will either be marked as routed or it might get routed. 
Since the structural changes do not take effect in the same frame, we cannot have both the systems active in the same frame for a given entity. I really hope that made sense. We are also caching the Namesh query. If you see here, a copy of the same initial Namesh query is provided for path calculation for all entities. This is different from the previous system where every path calculating job had its own instance of Namesh query. So the only thing we need to take care here is to avoid carving the Namesh at runtime as the changes to Namesh may not flow through to the system. This can be easily mitigated by issuing a new Namesh query for every agent that needs routing but at an added performance cost. With that, the navigation system is ready for use and we can use it to provide navigation functionality to any entity. Here, as part of our arbitrary system, we have a component which is responsible to move entity along a path. One thing that you will need in all the component is the current buffer index always initializing to zero the moment a new path becomes available. The other thing you might need is a min distance which is a distance threshold to consider that an agent has reached a waypoint so it can start navigating to the next available waypoint. The system that operates on this entity simply moves the entity between start and end point with the random speed. In the previous version of the code this was built into the navigation system as well and I had to comment this behavior if I did not want it. But now it has been separated out and the navigation system does not provide any default behavior. It simply spits out a path between specified start and end point into a dynamic buffer which can be read from other system. Likewise, caching can also be implemented if necessary by framing a unique key in the calling system and making a separate copy to persist the path before clearing the buffer and resetting the routed flag. If the same key is encountered in the future, a path can be fetched from persisted paths. This way, a cached path can be used again without calling upon navigation system to recalculate the path. So have a go and let me know what you think. Leave your suggestions in the comment section below. I will also be fixing a flaw in the navigation system wherein the code throws an error if there is no obstacle to route around between start and end point. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have fun.